Digital Minds is a B2B cloud provider of environmental trans product transparency applications, services, and data. And driving all of that, we believe that better design makes the complex clear. So consideration of design and customer experience is at the core of all that we do. We get asked this a lot. How, how does a software company fit into the PCR LCA EPD provider landscape? So we've made this uh, little comparative table um, that first and foremost is not um, meant to be uh, the full and total sum of providers, um, but just examples of each type. And so uh, we have uh, two LCA software and services providers, PE International and, and Prairie Sustainability. And then we have a short list of uh, testing and, and certification companies. And then if you look at Sustainable Minds, uh, we're a program operator, which means we do PCR and transparency report, which is an EPD development and delivery. So in that way, we provide similar services to the testing and certification companies. We also do LCA project delivery, like the LCA software and services companies, except that uh, we only provide LCA project delivery for strategic customers because LCA project delivery allows us to develop and better uh, deliver our uh, software products. And so we want to make it really uh, clear that Sustainable Minds collaborates with LCA providers and with program operators who verify and certify. So you can see that we don't have uh, an X in the certification box. We never want to be in that business. And because we want to be able to bring product transparency to all manufacturers to be able to operationalize it into the way you design and market products, and the way that we scale is by enabling LCA project delivery folks to offer manufacturers a transparency report as a deliverable rather than the traditional EPD. And for organizations that certify type 3 environmental declarations, they can certify transparency reports. And then in the last column, you can see that uh, our flagship product, our eco concept modeling and LCA software solution, is a streamlined software solution for product development teams to use in early stage product development. So while we're a software provider, our software is used in a different part of the product development process uh, than a Gabby or a SEMA Pro, which uh, you'll still need to use one of those or other full LCA tools to do your LCAs for making public reporting claims. So, this is how we think about uh, what it takes to uh, design and market greener products. We believe that it's a continuous improvement loop, that designing greener products means that you can market greener products. And if a manufacturer decides that they want to start by marketing more credibly uh, the relative greenness of their products, once they've done that benchmark, they can use that data to move into product design and product development uh, to hopefully improve those products, make a greener one, and then drive that back into their product development processes. So here in this diagram, uh, and again, manufacturers can start wherever they are. There isn't a right or wrong answer about where to start, whether it's starting with designing greener or marketing greener, but in this diagram, uh, we start out by uh, the user saying, I need product transparency. You can come to Sustainable Minds to develop a PCR, what we call our Part B, which we'll talk about in a little bit, 
or product group definition that sets the rules for how the LCA should be done using our transparency report framework. And with the results of that LCA and product marketing content, you develop a transparency report that then is shared publicly in your brand showroom and in our uh, manufacturer showroom, which also can be linked to from other marketing platforms and digital assets that you have. And then we take your LCA data, your proprietary data from this LCA, and we provide it back to you in our Sustainable Minds eco-concept modeling and LCA software so that your product development teams now have your data with a benchmarked LCA to be able to understand where the impacts are occurring and be able to improve the product to then update the LCA, update the report, update how you market it, et cetera, et cetera. So now we've got this continuous improvement loop of designing greener products and, and marketing greener products. So Sustainable Minds uh, is in the business of providing applications, data, and services to help product manufacturers design and market greener products, which all comes down to making greener decisions, greener design decisions, greener marketing decisions, and ultimately uh, for partners and suppliers and stakeholders to make better purchase decisions. So with that introduction, I'd like to get people to think a little bit um, more broadly about today's requirements uh, and the demand for greener product data, uh, that it's not only used in internal applications for design or uh, just for uh, disclosure types of reporting purposes, uh, increasingly the demand for information about products um, is being required at a whole range of points from product inception to final uh, use. Um, the data is being increasingly required to be used in other applications uh, that model finished products. Um, and the data is being requested by lots more folks uh, involved in uh, the design and marketing and use implementation process than had traditionally been required. So the creation of the data, the organization of the data, the delivery of that data has uh, entirely new, new sets of requirements. And so thinking about every stage in that process uh, requires uh, a completely uh, new approach to thinking about uh, how to deliver solutions that are useful to all of the stakeholders in the system. So that brings us to our 2015 Transparency Report Program theme, uh, where we're talking about moving from traditional disclosure documents to creating brand value, so integrating product transparency into product marketing. And we have a, a blog post that I invite all of you to go check out. It's, it's a short read, um, but here's the summary. Um, that uh, environmental performance has been uh, a new criteria in product development that now is a criteria in product marketing. The disclosure documents that are uh, required, that are created by today's standards process, um, are just that. They're disclosures of environmental uh, impacts. And, you know, the word disclosure has, has a lot of, uh, you know, not so friendly synonyms such as confession, exposure, leak, betrayal, also declaration. And, you know, just the term itself suggests uh, the manufacturer is sharing information that they would much rather keep hidden. And we believe that 
uh, and so do others. You know, uh, the carrot approach is generally more successful than the stick. And so if we can reframe and reuse information that's typically contained in a disclosure to be used in a way that credibly supports what a manufacturer is learning about its products from doing those kinds of studies, and then understanding what's the manufacturer doing with that information. Now that they know, what are they doing to improve the environmental performance and material health of their products? So while marketing has traditionally had a, a stigma associated with the word, and particularly in, in the sustainability world, just because all of the greenwashing that has gone on and continues to go on, uh, you know, real marketing is about what's real and being transparent and, and communicating that to the marketplace. And so today's disclosures, which largely get used to check a box, are not going to satisfy the real demand for transparency, which requires uh, understandable information that's made meaningful to the end user. And the fact is that the manufacturers who are uh, doing LCAs and material uh, ingredient analysis uh, do have meaningful stories to share, whether they're right at the beginning of that process or whether they've been doing it for a while. But um, you know, our bottom line is we believe that product transparency builds a credibly greener brand. And so the value for manufacturers to get started in product transparency is to not only demonstrate that they're participating, but that they actually understand the meaning of the information and they're doing something about it uh, to improve the way they make products. So the value for manufacturers to get involved in product transparency is to create a credibly greener brand because making greener purchase decisions requires, again, information that's understandable and meaningful. And the bottom line is that truth builds trust. Trust builds powerful brands, and powerful brands create preference and value for their companies. So with that, what's new in the 2015 Transparency Report program uh, three new categories. One, we're really excited about this, is uh, we've developed uh, methods and routes for enabling manufacturers to now have a choice of what kind of uh, product transparency document uh, they would like to produce. So now you'll be able to choose to create a transparency report or an EPD using any existing PCR. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, going forward. Uh, we're introducing several new transparency products, the Material Health Overview, as well as the EPD Overview. And then finally, your brand showroom, uh, which is our place for you in the cloud where you get to organize and distribute uh, your branded and integrated product transparency information all in one place that's freely accessible to any end user. So for those of us who, for those of you who are not familiar with Sustainable Minds, we introduced the transparency report at the end of 2013 and in 2014 developed the ISO 14025 program uh, and all of the documentation to uh, create transparency reports as well as PCRs. But the inspiration for the program came from doing an extensive research project evaluating existing environmental product declarations. And we looked at many, many EPDs um, from all over the world in different verticals and of different lengths. Some were 50 pages, some were 10 pages, some were in between, a few were short. What we found was that most EPDs were too long. 
uh, not surprisingly, uh, because they're technical documents um, created by technical people, traditionally for technical people. Uh, so it includes a lot of detail that is very difficult, if not impossible, for lay people, so non-LCA experts, uh, to understand and interpret. Most EPDs have very little uh, information about the product itself and the applications of use, its differentiators, um, and those of you familiar with EPDs know that um, there are a lot of issues that make them not comparable. So we ask the question, how does an architect, builder, contractor, or an end user of, of any product use an EPD to make a purchase decision? Our research conclusions uh, effectively concluded that uh, today's PCR EPD process was never designed uh, to deliver on the demand for transparency uh, that's being created today. So the increased demand for transparency and greener products um, is going to require a comprehensive solution, not just a point solution by changing one of the things uh, in this system. We also know that uh, when there's so much complexity of information and process that are process design as well as project design and information design is going to decrease the complexity and make the end result more clear and useful. We also uh, realize that anytime you ask people to think differently or do things differently than what they're accustomed to, there have to be real advantages that can clearly be articulated over how things are done today. We also identified that uh, the ISO standards and the other technical processes, which are stakeholder driven and consensus driven, are lengthy because people are learning on the job. What does all this mean? How do we participate? How do our uh, comments and perspectives matter? And so a lot of time gets spent on the front end trying to figure all those things out and get everything right up front. What we realized is that a system that will evolve and last uh, for a long time and support uh, continual improvement uh, needs to provide mechanisms for just that as more stakeholders get involved, as more learning and knowledge is developed in, in the industry, the program needs to be able to allow for those insights, improvements, um, and not lock in decisions um, that might uh, not be useful uh, in, in the long or even in the near term. The next is that uh, it's really important to focus on the benefits of the solution which at the end of the day is the report and how the information is delivered. That all of the other activity leading up to the report, the PCR development, the LCA, or the material analysis, is a means to an end. The end being delivering understandable, meaningful, and useful information to the folks who are going to use it to make decisions. So our internal motto is uh, keep the science, Let's re-engineer the process and focus on that report, the deliverable, the transparency report. How do we help manufacturers leverage their investments in LCA and now material analysis to create credible and affordable marketing tools to effectively present and build a greener brand? Just to be clear, a transparency report is an ISO 14025 Type 3 declaration. Um, so it's our brand of EPD. This is a page from the uh, ISO 14025 standard that pulls out in a note that program operators can name their documents anything they like. Uh, here's an example EcoLeaf, that's a brand, EcoProfile. Environmental Product Declaration, that's an example. So uh, 
just want to be clear, lots of folks said, why don't you just call it an, an EPD? Everybody understands what an EPD is. We chose not to call a transparency report an EPD because we wanted to indicate that it was something different uh, that you uh, can create through sustainable minds. And the transparency report program is now a systemic solution to the PCR EPD process to standardize and harmonize with other PCRs in the world and to make product transparency reporting understandable and meaningful. So we provide better options to get started. We've reverse engineered the PCR process through our standardized framework that now uh, simplifies and makes cost effective creating PCRs at the product group level, which means doing LCAs for products that compete, that deliver the same functionality and compete for the same projects. So now we're looking more at uh, doing the studies that would produce more consistent and comparable results. We deliver this strategic marketing and lead generation tool. Uh, it's not only uh, delivering the LCA results, but the way we're delivering those results helps make that information understandable and meaningful. We enable a manufacturer to describe what they're doing to make their products greener. We're also opting for different verification levels so manufacturers can decide if they want to spring for verification and certification. We believe ultimately customers will tell manufacturers what they need. You can add material health reporting into a transparency report to provide a comprehensive look at what's in manufacturer's products and, and why. And at the end of the day, they live in the cloud. The data is not encoded in PDFs, so it can be reused. And the manufacturer's brand showroom can be found in a place with other manufacturers, brands who are making incredibly greener products. And then part of the deliverable, as I mentioned earlier, we give you back your data in our eco-concept modeling and LCA software in your private data set so that your product development teams can take what you now know about your products and continue to make them greener. So the transparency report is three pages that came out of our research study. Um, you know, people don't have a lot of time. We all know that. Nobody really wants to read 40 pages. No one wants to read 10 pages. Um, we said it can be done in three pages, and page three is optional. What we also said was, look, why should a manufacturer have a separate brochure, effectively, for environmental performance information and all of the other information about the product in another brochure, all the traditional information that people use to make decisions. That makes it harder for the manufacturer to manage that information. It makes it harder for sales folks to sell those products. It makes it harder for the end user to have all the information all in one place to make an informed decision between traditional criteria like functional performance, cost, aesthetic, safety, and now environmental performance. So page one of a transparency report um, has all the information about the product, the functional performance, environmental performance attributes, because it's in the cloud. This can link to uh, locations on the manufacturer's website, as well as to uh, eco-labels or other standards, programs, really anywhere the manufacturer would like to send uh, a customer, including on every page is a contact button, so uh, someone reviewing a transparency report can directly connect with the manufacturer. Page two is the LCA results and interpretation, which we'll dive into a little bit more. But what we've done is uh, distilled the scope and summary, of the, the technical scope and summary of the LCA. On the right-hand side is the interpretation. What's causing the greatest impact? So simply written, very concise, 
And right here, the manufacturer can start talking about the programs or the activities that they've put in place uh, to improve the performance of their products. Below are the full LCA results. We'll get a little bit more detailed look at that. The transparency report framework is a modular approach to LCA. So we make it uh, in a glance understandable which lifecycle stages and which information modules were included in the scope. Below are the full characterized results, the Tracy results. But what we also add is our Sustainable Minds single figure scores uh, based on Tracy that allow a non-LCA professional to very quickly understand the relative impacts in each life cycle stage with a caption that clearly states what's contributing greater than 20% of the impact to each life cycle stage. And in the bottom section is the links to background report, the PCR, and the rating systems uh, that this report can earn credits in. And finally, on page three, which is optional, it's not required uh, to be included in the Type 3 Environmental Declaration, but we think is the most interesting page, the manufacturer can tell real stories about what they're doing uh, in each stage of their product life cycle that's contributing to performance improvement. And so each of these stages uh, can be opened and closed in an accordion uh, Hold, and the manufacturer can include just the stages uh, where they have uh, real stories to tell. In the footer of each report on each page, it's clear to see the verification and certification levels, the scope, who certified, who verified and certified the report, and the ability to contact that organization, again, as well as the manufacturer. A quick glance, glance at the transparency report framework, we looked at what was happening in Europe um, with the European standards for building construction products in 15804 and combined that with ISO 14040 and 14025 to create a two-part PCR program designed from the ground up for North America so regionalized for North America, as well as generalized for any industry, not just building and construction. Part A is uh, LCA calculation rules and report requirements. If you go to our website today, that's part of the 2015 release, is uh, the 2015 version of Part A that went through public comment technical review by our technical advisory board and is now the 2015 program, which is the standard playbook for how all LCAs will get done and all that goes into the report. Part B, the product group definition, is a very skinny uh, one-page set of rules created by a manufacturer, a group of manufacturers, a trade association that puts the specifics to uh, the drive, what defines that product group, so the functional performance, the standards, definition of the functional unit, and any additional rules that will enhance comparability, such as use phase scenarios or other types of life cycle stage scenarios, and any other rules that will help uh, make comparable results. Our recipe for a transparency report um, includes standards, people, and process. So it's a living system. It's not a set of documents that have been authored and then don't get reauthored for five years. It's a living system. So the Part A gets uh, republished every year based on uh, new rules, harmonization, keeping current with the marketplace. Part Bs are always getting developed. And our tab is really an innovative component of this system. Our technical 
advisory board that consists of LCA experts, manufacturers with LCA experience, certifying body participants who have LCA uh, experience. All of the work, the updates to Part A, all of the Part Bs go through this North American tab where they have consistent and persistent oversight and decision making to maintain uh, a program that's uh, not only consistent, but again aligned with what's happening in the industry. Our compatibility and harmonization routes are what's new in the 2015 program, where again, we're finally uh, liberating manufacturers from only having one option, which is to create a technical disclosure document, or today's traditional EPDs. Now a manufacturer can choose to create a transparency report, and it's on a case-by-case -case basis how that existing PCR gets utilized. We'll work with the program operator who uh, facilitated the creation of that PCR to develop an appendix that describes uh, what needs to get done uh, to create a transparency report. Or sometimes we can add an appendix to our Part A based on that existing PCR that prescribes what needs to be done in the LCA to create a transparency report. But again, it's this committee of technical experts who make sure that the rules are consistent between the two PCRs so that the underlying LCA is consistent so that no matter if one manufacturer in industry produces an EPD and another produces a transparency report, the results are consistent because they're based on the same set of rules. Or the transparency report is a program that's available for anybody to use. So a program operator can initiate a stakeholder process to create a product group definition in our program. We have uh, a robust set of tools for program operators and stakeholders uh, that run the program. And um, you know, we, we believe that offering uh, a standardized, consistent, streamlined, streamlined and operationalized program to anyone uh, in the business who would like to uh, get started or facilitate better transparency reporting, we're all for partnering and working with those folks. So the intent behind the 2015 Transparency Report Program was to provide something for everyone, whether you're a manufacturer who's just getting started with transparency reporting or your manufacturer who's already invested uh, in creating EPDs or other types of material ingredient reports. The list of transparency products starts with our transparency report. The EPD overview is a new product where manufacturers who have invested in EPDs and would like to leverage that investment in product transparency to use in product marketing, can use that EPD as we refer to as the background report and add the product marketing information of a transparency report into a new format with that EPD as the background report and now have a cloud-based uh, tool for, for product marketing. The material health overview which we're going to spend um, a little more focused time on in the next, next few slides, allows a manufacturer who uses any analysis method, whether it's uh, a health product declaration, a manufacturer's inventory, cradle to cradle, your own toxicological report, any of those types of analysis methods can be used as the background report to deliver a material health overview and finally, we have a transparency data sheet, which is a way for material and component manufacturers who 
don't want to disclose their full LCA or LCI data and would like to be able to market their products to finished product manufacturers to specify those ingredients in their products, this data sheet is embedded in our eco-concept modeling and LCA software tool so that in the context of design, the design team can find greener materials and components uh, to specify to improve their own products. So let's um, take a look at the elements of, of a transparency report and how these elements translate to the other products and how we uh, can make the claim we're making LCA results more understandable and meaningful. So here on page two of the transparency report, we've got LCA results and interpretation. On the left side of the page, we mentioned is the scope and summary of the report. And the right side is what's causing the greatest impact. It's very simple interpretation and what the manufacturer is doing to improve. Through this lower section, you can see here uh, the name of the background report and when it was published. Uh, if the manufacturer chooses to make that background report available, even a redacted version, that's an option because this report, again, lives in the cloud. You can link to whatever you like. It links to the framework and the PCR documents, as well as to the rating systems that, um, and the rating system language uh, that the end user can uh, earn points in with this, um, with this report. So if you look at the template of page two, report scope and attributes and summary, interpretation and explanation, detailed data and the results, and reference information and rating systems. I'd like to introduce the material health overview. The material health overview was designed, again, so that a manufacturer can provide environmental performance and material health information made understandable and meaningful all in one place. Page two then becomes two tabs with life cycle assessment information and material health information. On the material health tab on the left side is the scope and the disclosure requirements and overview. And on the right side is the interpretation. What are the greatest health concerns? We've designed the material health overview to answer four questions quickly because we believe this is what the end user wants to know. Again, doesn't have a lot of time, wants to make a better informed decision. So here's the questions. Are there any hazardous ingredients in the product? If yes, how bad are they? What are the exposure concerns? And what's the company doing to improve the human health impact? The left side of the page, the scope and disclosure attributes of the method, right side of the page, results and interpretation. So I bring your attention to the lead credit language. So this option one material ingredient reporting allows for three uh, types of material analysis methods. A manufacturer inventory, a health product declaration, or a cradle to cradle certified product. This is a quick glance at um, the report coming out of each of those types of material analysis methods. This is an example manufacturer's inventory report. Um, it's exciting that Green Circle certified uh, is partnering with clean energy production to do uh, verification of a manufacturer's inventory. This is what a report, an example report would look like. Uh, this is um, part of a health product declaration, not version two. We're all um, looking forward to seeing that next month. Uh, and then here is the uh, C2C material health certificate. So three very different types of document deliverables 
for three different material analysis methods that are acceptable for earning that credit uh, in LEAP P4. What the material health overview does is it effectively uh, normalizes material health reporting. And so the material health overview is analysis agnostic. You can use any type of analysis method as your background report. And so what changes a little bit is the representation of the uh, scope and the disclosure attributes as required by each method. What's consistent and what's useful and not available to you through just creating a disclosure document is the interpretation. What do these results mean? And what's the manufacturer doing to improve material health of its products? So uh, what we're showing here is an example. Um, here's two example uh, material health overviews. One using the manufacturer inventory as a background report. And one using a health product declaration as a background report. So you can see the summary and the results, the summary and the results. Or the user can link into the full report and read that full report um, if they so choose. So it's really providing you the level of, of information that you would like to uh, take away to be able to make a decision. And then, uh, again, the um, credit value in the, um, in this case, lead that you can earn with, with your report. Now, Here's the real power in the material health overview is the interpretation section. So what we've done is we've created a template, an outline of content that a manufacturer might want to utilize to be able to speak to what the reader is seeing on this side of the page. So it's literally, here's what the disclosure of the material analysis is telling us, but what does it mean? And what is the manufacturer doing, uh, again, to improve that product's performance? So these are the instructions that we provide to the manufacturer when they create the content to create the What are the Greatest Health Concerns section. So we say, you know, think about what the user might want to know when looking this in, at this information. And you can provide self-declared stories that you're pulling from your own knowledge of how the product is made and tested. Or you can use science-based explanations if the manufacturer has done an expert toxicological risk assessment or any other type of expert interpretation. Any or all of that supporting content is available for the manufacturer to use. So in the first section is what's in the product and why. So we suggest the manufacturer might talk about why it qualifies for any green ratings or eco labels comment on the material or the ingredient choices. Are there trade-offs between functional environmental performance? Are there industry standards uh, that the product needs to comply with that wouldn't meet those standards or regulations if the ingredient wasn't present? Um, have alternatives been considered or implemented recently? If yes, were there trade-offs between functional environmental performance? And the next section is product handling and exposure concerns. What's been done in the design and the manufacture of the product to consider the potential impacts in the use stage of the product life cycle. So again, if there are ingredients that are being flagged or identified as potentially hazardous, are they still showing up as hazardous when the user interacts with the product? And this has really been the greatest um, concern that the industry has heard from manufacturers that they don't have the opportunity to explain why, by the time the material is uh, processed and delivered in a finished product, uh, it's likely no longer posing um, any type of exposure risk. So the manufacturer has the opportunity to write about should the user be concerned about interacting with the product, and then substantiate that relative to things like where is it installed in the building, how often is it used? And again, what's happened in, in the manufacture of that product? So what they are delivering uh, is a product that's safe. 
And then finally, here they have that same opportunity to talk about what they're doing to improve the material ingredient health. So if it's part of a transparency report, they can, they can start to foreshadow some of the things that they're doing. But on page three, again, which is optional, but we think is the coolest part, they can now tell integrated stories of environmental performance improvement and material health improvement by life cycle stage so that anyone reading the report can see that the manufacturer has not only undertaken these technical evaluations, but they understand what they mean and they're doing something about it. Now the material health overview is also available as a standalone report. Some or many manufacturers may opt to do a material health overview first, or they may choose not ever to do uh, an LCA of their products and, and just want to do the material ingredient analysis. It's largely dependent upon what a manufacturer's customers are asking them for. So all of the content in the dashboard from a transparency report, so again, all of the things, functional, and performance when you would need to make a purchase decision is right there and then all of the technical information and the interpretation uh, follows suit. Quick peek at the EPD overview. It's for manufacturers who have produced EPDs and would like to add product performance interpretation and greener product story content of a transparency report. Again, the EPD is the background report. We've heard this consistently that manufacturers who have gotten started, and particularly large manufacturers who have a global presence, have EPDs with different or multiple program operators around the world who produce EPDs that are branded more the brand of the program operator than the manufacturer's brand. So not only do they not look like the manufacturer's brand, uh, they're inconsistent just because of the program operators they're, they're with. Again, uh, they're in the program operator's databases, the data's in PDFs, it's not reusable. So our intent with the EPDO review is to offer manufacturers who've already invested uh, a low-cost, high-value way to leverage that investment. and. Uh, start to integrate the product transparency in, into product marketing and further the material health overview can be added instead of just having another um, standalone document. So you know we asked this question uh, to the manufacturers we're having discussions with and in fact what's very interesting is we're having discussions with the marketing side of the product manufacturers organization now in addition to the technical engineering product stewardship folks who have traditionally been responsible for doing the uh, environmental performance reporting and you know as manufacturers do more and more reports and different types of reports we've already talked about just that disclosure uh, once everybody has it, it levels the playing field, and it isn't going to satisfy the real transparency demand. But further, those manufacturers who have these documents now, they're trying to figure out how do we train our reps, how do we train our partners, how do we get these into the hands of prospects and customers uh, to utilize to help drive better informed uh, specification and, and purchase decisions. And the cost to create and maintain and distribute, uh, you know, persist and are scaling. Um, as more reporting is required, and it's been difficult to uh, necessarily measure and justify the ROI of those investments. So that's where our brand showroom uh, steps in to address that set of challenges that we're providing one place for a manufacturer to deliver its branded and integrated product transparency information where the manufacturer can now collect and collate 
all of their existing transparency products and in contemplation of any new ones, organize them with their own brand, their own positioning. Again, this is in the cloud. It's all database driven. You can drive folks to your website as well as to other locations, but then drive them directly to the various transparency products. And this page is freely accessible, uh, no login required um, for anyone to use. We've heard a lot about the service, the cost of customer service to respond to uh, sending out PDFs of different types of reports, um, training of how to use those reports, uh, increasingly different kinds of reports that are being requested. Think about Sustainable Minds as uh, the Rosetta Stone of transparency reporting, where we will continue to add report types to take the complexity out of product transparency reporting and provide simplified, standardized, and normalized ways for manufacturers uh, to deliver all of their product information uh, in a branded and meaningful and understandable way. You know, the, the big picture is that all those brand showrooms roll up into our manufacturer showroom again, freely available, and again, because it's in the cloud, uh, manufacturers can drive tra traffic back and forth uh, to their own website. Uh, content can link to or be reused in other uh, types of, of marketing and, and uh, calculation and modeling tools. And ultimately, you'll be able to offer uh, standardized comparisons within products uh, from each manufacturer so uh, your sales folks and your customers can actually better evaluate the collections of products that they'd like to specify. What we're doing is, again, helping manufacturers get all their information in one place, make it understandable, easy to use, and then leverage that information in a way that helps your sales and marketing folks get it across to partners, customers, and users to help them make more informed decisions. This is just a quick shot of uh, at the end of the transparency report deliverable process. We give you back your proprietary data in our application, in your own private data set, with some example products models. So you can start examining uh, where performance improvements can be gained. This is the opportunity for material and component manufacturers to provide their branded products right in the context of design, where a branded version of a product can show up, and the user can click right on the uh, data sheet link, and they're right there in the interface data sheet uh, can pop open and the user can learn about and the functional performance attributes, the advantages and alternatives to traditional materials, the industries and applications of use, how the manufacturer is making it greener, and then the parameters of the LCA or LCI data, but only the sustainable mind single, single figure impact factor and the carbon equivalent score is delivered and broken down by impact category, but in this way, manufacturers who do not want to disclose full LCA results of their materials or ingredients can still demonstrate they've done the LCA, the data exists, it can be used in comparative decision making without full disclosure. So again, today we have these transparency products. We will continually be adding transparency products for other types of scientific uh, analysis and results that the market is creating or asking for. And it's easy for any manufacturer to get started. And really, you fall into two categories. Either you have EPDs or other disclosures, or you don't. But the process is, is still the same. 
the onboarding process is to establish a scope and a roadmap, socialize and onboard the team because more folks are going to be involved than just the technical folks who might have only been involved in EPD creation, collating and organizing the documents, conducting any more uh, LCA or materials anal analysis uh, for new products. The manufacturer provides Sustainable Minds its content in our uh, template-based content collection forms, develop your visual brand components, and then we build and deploy your transparency products in your brand showroom and present and train those folks who are part of the team that's been onboarded. So effectively training the trainers. You can go out into your organization and effectively leverage your investment in product transparency to build a credibly greener brand. We have pricing that is um, very straightforward. Um, there's a one-time onboarding fee and then an annual transparency products platform fee for the number, for a range of number of transparency products um, that you might create. In terms of software and services, on the design greener side, we have our software, which is sold by subscription. And the more subscriptions you purchase, the uh, per user cost decreases. We offer support and private data set creation, getting started services and training, which might be product benchmarking, pilot programs and training. We do offer LCA production, review, verification services. And in the market greener category, I've just told you about our transparency reports and products and our manufacturer's brand showroom. So to summarize, our transparency report program for 2015 helps to inform greener product decisions, drive continual environmental performance improvements, and helps build a credibly greener brand. So we are at the top of our hour, and the questions that have come in, I've already answered. Um, there's a question about pricing, and I would uh, encourage uh, us to engage with you on that question specifically. Uh, as we're early in 2015 and rolling out this program, we're very excited to work uh, with manufacturers, both who are just getting started and want to get started in a way that makes their investment really pay off, but also to work with manufacturers who have invested and want to take uh, their product transparency uh, to the next level. So we're very excited to talk uh, with manufacturers who want to lead in their industry and who care about design and their brand. So with that, I thank you all for attending. We will be following up with you, but don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we look forward to learning more about your product transparency interests and requirements, and hope you have a great day. <laughs>